everybody and welcome to Heartbeat. Today I'd like to share with you a true story. But this story doesn't stop in just sharing the story. Um, I want to then share what, I guess, what I got out of it that might help you in uh, having greater faith, in increasing your faith, in following the Lord more and believing in the Lord. Um, so let us begin. The book is called Faith Like Potatoes. Many of you may have read it. If not, I suggest you go and read it. It is a true story about an African, South African farmer who ended up being a preacher of the word of the Lord, of God, of in his life. But he started out being a farmer. But he, he had a faith and belief in God. Um, but and his name is Angus Buchan. Um, I'm maybe not pronouncing it correctly, but we'll call it him that anyway. So it's Angus Buchan, B-U-C-H-A-N. And he believed that God had asked him to plant potatoes. But in a time where there was an unprecedented drought, and planting potatoes was a massive risk. He believed that he heard the Lord, so he followed what he felt God asked him to do, and he planted the tubers, because they don't plant by seed, they plant by the leftover potatoes, I guess, old potatoes, the tubers planted into the dry dust, and it was dry when he was planting it. But when the time came, for harvest and the harvest time for normal potatoes is about 90 days but you don't see anything happening it's all underground um, if it's growing you see on top um, sort of some um, green growth but that's not what we eat we eat the potato that grows underneath and he could sort of see bits, but wasn't sure, and it didn't look good, and like, oh my goodness, the rain hasn't come. How's he gonna water it? Because there's drought, so he doesn't even have the water to, to make it grow. And then when the time came, he harvested a bumper crop, a bumper crop. And all around the area, everyone knew about this farmer that had planted these potatoes because of the faith that he had in God providing for him and his family and for the people around him. You know, if God said something, do you think you'd follow through on it? You could be hoping and praying, but faith often is not seen. We want to see things, but our faith often, what, what is it? We don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. And faith isn't often seen straight away. Faith may take 90 days for something to be seen. It may take 90, 90 hours, may take 90 months, whatever it is. But if we believe God has said it, God will do it. Faith is a gift. It's a gift from God. And we can't do anything to increase it, but we can ask God to increase our faith. He can put us in situations where we have to put our faith in God and rely on him, and that will increase our faith. And then when something else happens again, we look back on our life and go, oh my goodness, God was trustworthy then. God will be trustworthy now. I'm going to trust in him. Now, of course, the hardest thing is, did God say that? Well, that's another question always in, in trying to see, did God ask of that, that of me? But if it's a truth that, that doesn't contravene scripture, if it's a truth that doesn't contravene the, you know, the, the rules and laws of the church, then possibly God, possibly God has said it to you. I always say possibly because human nature, we can sometimes think and it wasn't God, it was us. But we... We always win. I find we always win. If I put my faith in God and I've got it right, I win. If I put my faith in God and I've got it wrong, then God, out of his loving kindness and compassion and mercy for me, seeing my heart, because he doesn't look at 
what man sees the outside, he looks at our hearts. If my heart is right, then God will work good out of my wrong choices. Because it says all things work for good for those who love God and are called according to his plan. So I win every time if my attitude of heart is right and I put my faith and belief and trust in God. Where do you think God wants you to put your faith, to increase your faith? You know, Lazarus had died and Jesus had told his disciples, I'm not going. He'd heard Lazarus was very sick. I'm not going because straight away because God's glory will be seen. There's always a purpose in what God does, always. He has the perfect plan for all of us, not just for the favorite favorites or the individual that's not me. You know, God has a perfect plan for all of us. And so he waits. And when he goes, Lazarus is already dead in the tomb, four days, stinking dead, smelling, not going to come back. That's what we think. And in John 12, 17, actually, um, uh, sorry, chapter 12, verse 17, it states, The crowd that was with him when he called Lazarus from the dead and raised him from the dead continued to spread the word. God's glory is seen. And so all the people that were there start kept spreading the word. Look what Jesus did. Look what's happened. Lazarus is alive. Oh my goodness, is he truly then the son of God? He raises people from the dead. Verse 18. Many people, because they had heard that he had performed this sign, went out to meet him. And the Pharisees said to one another, See, this is, this is getting us nowhere. Look how the whole world has gone after him. Because of the sign that Jesus performed by rising Lazarus from the dead, bringing glory to his Father in heaven, people heard about it. People saw it, but then people shared about it. Then people heard about it. Then the ones who have heard have come to follow him to, or to see who this man is. These signs and these wonders, these miracles, um, I guess, propelled them to go, maybe God could perform a miracle in my life. They did not yet believe in Jesus, but they could see there were signs that Jesus possibly could be the Son of God. And so they come to check him out. God allows signs and wonders and miracles to happen in our life to increase our faith, to increase us to go check God out more, to throw trust in him more, to go seek him more. And from that, he gives us the gift of belief, of faith. And so he uses these miracles, these signs and wonders to increase our faith. Do you believe God could perform a miracle in your life? Do you know he does in the world every day? We sometimes just don't acknowledge it. You sometimes think, oh, it's the medicine that stopped the cancer. It's the treatments the doctors gave. Yes, God can use the medicine and the treatments and everything, but he's the one who's revealed all of that to humankind. And he's the one who performs the miracles. Then there's times when it was the hand of God, nothing that man did, did anything. And God still saved people from death, saved people to give them life. But I'm even talking about not this human death and life, but eternal death and life. It is God who saves us from the eternal death that we could have. It's him who reaches out to us. It's him who has given us and we're at a time right now when we're preparing for the death and resurrection of our Lord. It's what Lent is. We're preparing our hearts. We're looking at ourselves. So do we look at our faith right now? Are we preparing our hearts that God could bring a miracle in my life? That I would believe more. That I would have more faith. God knows 
Man sees the outside. But God looks at our hearts. But he understands sometimes for people to come to faith, they need to see things. He understands us. He understands our weakness and our frailty. But he asks us, do you trust me? Do you believe in me? Do you have faith and eyes to see? So maybe I'm not planting potato tubers and growing a crop of potatoes, but I want to put my trust and my faith in my God for what he asks of me where I live, where I'm at, in my circumstances, so that I can look back and go, yes, Lord, I believe. And for the next thing, I will believe again because you are trustworthy, you are faithful, and you fill me with more faith. Increase my faith, Lord. And may I share it with others to help them on the journey of coming to know the living God, to know what he has for us, the best way to live, the best life. Saint Augustine said, faith is to believe what you do not see. Even Jesus said, Blessed are those who, who do not see but yet believe. St. Augustine, though, goes further on to say, though, the reward of this faith is to see what you believe. God gives many rewards. And one of them is that we will see what we believe in. We will see the hand of God work. Blessed are those who believe and can't see. But the reward that can come, not always come, but can come, is that you will see what you do believe in. You will see the hand of God in your life and in your friends and family's life, in your neighbor's life, if you just truly believe. I pray that encourages you, but ask yourself the question in this Lenten season, what is my faith like? What does God want me to put my faith in? And I should pray for an increase of faith so that God's glory will be seen in the world, in my neighborhood, in my family in my life. Thanks for listening.